It's been a minute since I did one of these. It's been, what, two, three months or so? Yeah. I've had to deal with some stuff, mostly relating to my to my job, and it kind of became difficult to do this, to the point where I was questioning if I really wanted to do these reviews or not. But then I realized something. I really like music. And not just pop, and and not just pop either. And even if I hate it, if there's some kind of enjoyment that I can glean from it, or if there's something that I feel the need to say about it, then you know, I should go ahead. And I have something to say about a good number of songs. He, my last review was from a trio of individual artists, and my first review back is by a trio of individual artists. Rihanna, Kanye West, and Paul freaking McCartney. This is four, five seconds. Four, five seconds is a very interesting beast. You have, you have an R&B singer and a rapper doing a sort of country folkish thing with with a legendary guitarist who's for the most part only playing one guitar riff like seriously you know he sings too right in fact the beatles had two lead singers john lennon and paul mccartney he was also the lead singer of his own band wings and he had solo work where he sang i think you're getting my point here paul mccartney could have sung on this song but you know Let's not dwell on that. Let's examine the song for what it is instead of what it could have been. I think I've had enough. You too? Good, so have I. See you next time. I might get a little drunk. Oh, oh, oh okay. I'll... Sorry, I'll get back to reviewing the song. So this is about as good a time as any to talk about the guitar riff since, well, the song just started. To be honest, if I didn't really know any better, I wouldn't really know this was Paul McCartney. I mean, this guitar line sounds like really anybody could have just done it. I mean, maybe it's just me, don't get me wrong, but I'm sure it was written by Paul McCartney himself, and that's fine. But it seems like anybody could have played it. I mean, I'd, if I didn't already know it was Paul McCartney, I would believe it'd be any douchebag with a guitar. John Mayer, you know, Jason Mraz. I'd even believe it was Lil Wayne. And and Lil Wayne is, is, is known for not being very, very good at playing guitar. I'm not funny. So, what I can I gather about the first verse, this song is about someone who's normally pretty nice, about to not be very nice. Presumably because when they get drunk, they get a little bit angry. However, the chorus seems to be somewhat confused about when the song takes place. Now I'm four, five seconds from Longest four or five seconds I've ever experienced. Or is it 45 seconds? The lack of proper pronunciation makes it very unclear. I'm going to go with 45 seconds because it seems to make more sense as both the, as the first verse and the chorus is about 40 is about 45 seconds and the second verse and chorus is slightly shorter than 45 seconds slightly you know despite the fact that no one actually talks like that who says 4 5 seconds 40 that's what people say 45 quarter 3 quarters of a minute more likely to say three quarters of a minute than four or five. And we got three more days till Friday. I'm not sure how relevant the fact that this song takes place on a Tuesday is. It sounds like you're either being overly specific for no reason or you're purposely trying to appeal to people who work nine to five Monday through Friday, which is the majority of the country. Because we know that that's not what you work. You work longer hours if 
you work either longer hours or shorter hours depending on your demands. I'm just trying to make it back home by Monday morning. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with appealing to the middle class. But actually, wait a minute. It's Tuesday and you're concerned about getting back home on by Monday morning? Where the hell are you that that's a concern? I mean, the main implication that comes from it's Tuesday and I have to get back by Monday morning is that the risk, there's a risk that you would not get back by Monday morning. And the main reason I can think of for not being able to get back by Monday morning is that you're a large distance away. Or you're in jail, one. And I swear I will somebody would tell me. Tell you what exactly that by making a bare bones song with with no synthesizer whatsoever that you redeem yourself for working with both calvin harris and david Guetta to make terrible songs from the two most pathetic blights on the image of edm today i'm, I'm not gonna let that go speaking of which doesn't calvin harris have a new song that i could tear apart I should probably look into that well, now we enter Kanye's contribution to the song, and what the fuck is that? Sounds like some kind of shrunken-headed hype man or a little girl or something. I can't even understand what they're saying when they're in the foreground of the track. I suppose it's there to distract us from Kanye West's obvious use of auto-tune, and clearly not using enough of it to to mask his off-key notes. Honestly, if he did just not use the auto-tune at all, it would have been better. I also think that the auto tune is really interfering with his um, per, with his ability to portray emotion. For example, hold me back, I'm about to spaz. What? You gonna short out on me, robot man? See, that's another problem with this song in particular. Kanye's inability to emote properly seems to interfere with in this line in particular his ability to show the proper amount of anger that he should be showing for someone who is in fact about to spaz. And now the bridge. The bridge is probably actually my favorite part of this song as it really does a better job of establishing what the full scope of what's going on. Could somebody tell Paul he's not supposed to be playing guitar here? Anyway, the bridge in the first verse really encapsulate the fact that the song does involve a big conflict. It's almost like this part takes place after the conflict. I mean, I mean, most songs don't really have a straightforward linear narrative, so it wouldn't really surprise me at all. But this one seems to be going the path of a mostly linear narrative, which is something that country music tends to do a little bit more, and I think that's where a lot of critics are getting the comparison to country music from this song. It does a lot of things that country music does. Or, well... A lot of things that country music used to do. The song actually ends on a somewhat ambiguous note, and you know what? I like the song. I really like the song. The only thing that really break, brings down the song for me is Kanye's part. I feel like his contribution would was lessened. I also, f and to harp on what the song could have been, even though I said I wasn't going to, his part should have been done by Paul McCartney. Paul would have done it better. Even with Kanye's lines. So yeah, I guess what I'm getting at is the song is really good despite the little bit that it has going against it. Don't get me wrong. This is not something people are normally going to want to listen to over and over again. It's a very art... It's a more artsy kind of song. And you know what? That has a place in pop. But... But... It's definitely something worth a listen and speaking of things that are worth a listen, tune in next week when I review a Taylor Swift song. Yeah. I think a, I think a lot of people would think that I was that I was kind of avoiding these reviews. Bye.